when the world gets tough, the tough read romance, and it turns out they also film a cup and a ketchup. Hey there, cousin here, and welcome back to Always Doing. So yeah, I'd say things are kind of tough right now. Not only is the news awful between, you know, war and a leaked Supreme Court decision that would drastically change a whole bunch of things that I would rather not be changed to just existential angst. We got it. So I am going to do a cup of ketchup and I'm going to talk about what I'm currently reading, just how I'm doing in general, and I'm also going to finish off that value books haul because those three books, yeah, they finally arrived. First I'm going to start with the tea I'm drinking, which is this Four Seasons Oolong, which was a desperation supermarket purchase because they don't sell great tea in the supermarket, especially Oolong, and this is in tea bags, and it leaves a lot to be desired, but I'm just trying to drink through it so I can justify opening up a package of nicer stuff. So I don't know if it's the stress or something else, but my body is not very happy with me right now. I am just getting over a cold that my husband brought home. Thank you, husband. And just it's random things like stuff popping out on my skin and just things where my body's like, yeah, we need to, you know, make adjustments and do things. So I'm trying, I'm trying to eat healthier. Um, trying to move more, all of that kind of stuff. And I've also changed my reading a bit to fit this mood. I have not been reading book two prize books as quickly as I should, but I only have two left and we are in the very beginning of May, so I'm not worried. And I also say the two that I'm most interested in for last. So I have a feeling that once I start them, I'll be fine. I just need to get around to starting one. In the meantime, I have been reading so much in Japanese. At the end of April, I read Kino Nani Tabeta by Yoshinaga Fumi, and this is What Did You Eat Yesterday? It is available in English. I have a review of it in my April part two wrap up, but like this was good. Then I went straight into Marathon Ichinense by Takagi Naoko, that roughly translates as my first marathon, and it's a graphic memoir of a woman who went from a couch potato, thought she needed to move around a little bit more, started running, and decided to aim for a full marathon within a year, actually. And she was already a known mangaka, manga artist, and her publisher encouraged her. One of her like editors, like somebody at the publishing company, also joined her as well as a friend as they did training. And it's all about her, that kind of life. And I really liked this a whole bunch. Especially because it is, again, completely escapist and separate from everything else going on. And I think that's one reason why I have been concentrating on the Japanese. Because it, even, even the language is completely different from what I normally read. And then I also finished Aseito Sekken, uh, which is uh, Sweat and Soap by Yamada Kintetsu. This is a manga that it's romance. I am assured that it will be romance over the course of the entire series and all you have to do is look at the covers and you can see that. But uh, it walks a very fine line between stuff like the consent isn't golden. At the same time, it's a lot better than a lot of other stuff I've read in Japanese. This has been translated into English and apparently gets sweeter and better as you go. And I still really liked this first volume, had problems with some little bits. But um, I will be excited to read on in this series as well. I'm glad that I bought that second volume. It was worth it. I finished Sweat and Soap yesterday, and this morning I was like, okay, the escapism has its place. i am be going back to more of it tonight, I think. But in the meantime, let's like dig into the pain in a way. So I picked up The Twilight of Democracy by Anne Applebaum. I originally saw Courtney uh, Farader read this and talk about it, and that made me interested. And just considering everything going on in the U.S., I want, this is what I did, like right after the January 6th uh, insurrection as well, I read a lot about fascism and authoritarianism, and I've been taking notes and forming my thinking about all this stuff. This is going to lean into that. It takes care of a little, like I want to study something that's not Japanese. Reading these is wonderful, but it's not always studying, especially because this isn't that hard to read, thankfully. Every once, uh, once in a while I look up a word, but for this it's the concepts and linking things together with, uh, with what I already know and discovering stuff, thinking about stuff, analyzing stuff, diving into stuff. 
So there's this. I'm through one chapter and it's okay so far. And for likely later today when I want to dive back into the escapism, I'm going to try and do it in English with an arc that I just picked up called A Perfect Engagement by Carla Cratoville. This is from Tool Publishing. It comes out later this month. And the reason I got this is because it's a twin plot in a historical era. I really don't want to do contemporary right now. There's nothing escapist about contemporary. This is about a woman who starts seeing this titled guy and they end up getting engaged, but the guy doesn't want to go to his own engagement party, so he tells his uh, twin brother to go in his stead and you know they used to do that kind of thing all the time as kids so definitely will work. She realizes right away that this is not the man she is affianced to but things happen and this is exactly the kind of off the wall camp I, like what is going on here thing that I think will be really good right now. As for what I'm watching, I'm only really watching baseball and it's only half watching most of the time. I'll be doing something else online and I'll have the you know, TV app up in the corner and just see how the game's going on. The Angels are doing so well right now. It's a joy to watch them as a team. Even though Otani isn't hitting, it doesn't really matter because the whole top of the order is doing an amazing job. And today in Boston, they managed an amazing comeback win and they had something like six runs in the 10th inning. Like it was really fun to watch. And as for booktube, that's not really happening sadly. I had caught up with my watch later, I had gotten it down to zero, and then I decided that maybe I could let it grow a little bit and I've let it grow too much. So I would like to dig into that, but at the same time I want to spend more time reading and the baseball is taking, like I gotta figure out a new balance for myself because this isn't quite working. So that's my reading, that's my life, and if you watched my value books Hall, you'll know that I was waiting for three more and they finally came in. The national holiday totally messed it up. They didn't come for a few days after I'd filmed that. So anyway, I just want to get through these three books very quickly here. First is Ojisama to Neko by Sakurai Kai. This has been translated into English. I think it's called A Man and His Cat. A lonely older guy ends up adopting a not so cute cat and things go from there. I've seen a couple of people talk about this. I think Shannon over at That's So Po read this and I don't know, more cat manga in my life. It's not a bad thing. I can't remember where I heard about this next one, but it's Renzuso no Sankaku by Nogiri Yoko. And it's translated in English as Love in Focus, I think, which is not the Japanese title. But the Japanese title is like the name of like a dorm or something they live in. And that's Renzu, which is also like glasses lens. And then Sankaku is triangle. So I think it's hinting at a love triangle. I am not against love triangles. And yeah, I just, I'm trying you know, first in series to see what sticks. And then from one of my favorite mangaka, Masada Midi, we have Naki Mushi Chieko-san, and this is the second in a duology. It's very confusing because this was originally published as four volumes, and then in the bunkos, which is the smaller size, it was collected into two, and they called the first one... I forgot if it was like, this is the... Well, that was like the love edition, and this is like the travel edition, so it makes it really hard to you know, put them in order. Maybe it doesn't matter, whatever. I made sure I read them in order. But this is about a couple who's probably yeah, in their 30s, maybe pushing 40, and they don't have kids and slice of life, which is what Masada Midi does best. So that's where I'm at right now. Where are you at? How are things where you are? What is giving you some joy in these difficult times? Let me know down in the comments below. I hope you're all doing well and doing what you need to for your own well-being, if that's through your reading, if it's getting outside, whatever it may be, because heaven knows we read it right now. And if you haven't seen my books to read while the world is on fire video, this is a wonderful time <laughs> to go check it out. So thank you so much for watching. Take care, subscribe if you're new, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!